Right now, we have something really special, the Digital Mastermind Blueprint, a mentorship program that I'm gonna kick off. So if you wanna be part of this program that teaches you how to start a business, how to set it up, get your business credit, go below, get on the email list. All right, so one of the things that is getting ready to happen, what I believe, is 2020 is gonna be the year of the monster recession. And let me go ahead and outline some points why I think that's gonna be. I was talking to some friends this week, people I haven't talked to in a while, and two of them are looking for jobs. And these are highly technical trained people. And one of the things that they all were saying was they were having a hard time finding jobs. And I know unemployment is radically low. It's like 3.9%, or is it? Because I was talking to these people and they were having like, they were just like, one dude told me he sent out like 100 resumes, no response. And what I think is happening, and I think this is, in the hidden economy is events and things that are happening that haven't been reported yet. And what I really believe is unemployment is going to take a big jump in the beginning of 2024, a very large jump. I'm talking it's 3.9%, it may be six or 7% first quarter of 2024. And we may be moving towards an unemployment rate that's higher than it was in 2008, 2009, 2010, unemployment was 10%. And one of the things that spells this out, there's a YouTube channel that's called Car Questions Unanswered. And what he does is he goes, he's a car dealer, goes to dealer auctions, brings us on the inside, and the number of repos has been insane. The number of repos have been insane. And one, since I was in the car rental business, I can see what's gonna happen, because when you get people who get behind on their bill, they just simply don't care about the car. They just simply don't care. So these cars are crashed, missing pieces, very filthy, very dirty. But the thing that's really interesting is banks are running the repos through the dealerships and these repos are running two, three, and four, and five times. See, what is happening is the banks are repoing the cars they're putting them at the dealer lot and they're putting them up for sale and they're not selling. And today I was out just paying attention. I did not see one new car dealer tag today. Now, are there people out buying cars? Absolutely, but not, nowhere near as many as. So you have a lot of people out here who are not buying cars. You have a lot of people who have bought cars during recession not recession pricing, but let's call it pandemic pricing, where it was hard to get cars, where it was hard to find cars, and people were paying above price. I think it's called a market adjustment. And these people are literally buried in these cars because these cars were 10, 20, 30, 40, $50,000 two years ago. You can get that same car for 10, 20, 30, 40, $50,000 less. So why would you pay more for a used car? You just wouldn't. So what's happening is these people are buried in these cars. They just can't trade them. And hopefully they don't have an accident where the car gets totaled because what the insurance company is going to do is pay market adjustment. How do I know this? When I was in the car rental business, I had a vehicle that was stolen. And because the market rate was high, they actually paid me more money than I paid for the vehicle because that was the market adjustment price. So when the market adjustment price goes up, that's great. When it goes down, and it is really down. You, you can have a car that maybe you paid, let's say $50,000 for, and you put down maybe 10,000 that left you a $40,000 loan balance. That same car now, you can get for 35,000. If you have a wreck, you will not have enough equity in your car to cover you. Even though your insurance company will pay off the remaining, there still will be a balance. And this is what a lot of people are finding themselves in. They're in a position where they are 
actually finding themselves to be burdened by a car that isn't worth what they financed the car for any longer. And this is one of the things, this is one of the reasons I am really glad that I sold the majority of my cars when prices were decent. Now the prices are just trash. The prices are just really trash. And one of the things that is happening is people are finding that by, this is something I could speak from from personal experience, selling cars in the current market. Essentially, people don't have money. They just don't have money. And my more expensive cars, thank God, I got rid of a lot of my expensive cars through Carvana, CarMax. I had a few cars that I actually sold for, to Carvana for more than what I paid for them. But right now, it's a really brutal market to sell a car, unless you have very good pricing, really cheap, over the top pricing. So one of the things that is happening is this market is driving any other markets because people cannot afford to buy cars, right? And many people who have cars, the cars are getting repossessed. And then you have people who cannot find jobs. And then, oh, let's talk about housing. Housing prices for people who are trying to buy are going up. Rental prices are absolutely insane. This is something that I check out on Zillow and I am seeing properties that I know to be in the hood. Now, let's go ahead and talk about that. What I use, let me go ahead and say what I used to, what I used to consider the hood because I don't go over there. I don't have friends. I don't visit, but I, there's this place in Atlanta called Metropolitan Avenue or Parkway Metropolitan. It used to be called Stewart Avenue. And Stewart Avenue used to be a haven for prostitutes. When I got to Atlanta, the guys who were already here, they say, we need to show you Stewart Avenue. So we get in Stewart Avenue and we go down Stewart Avenue, literally on every corner, there was five to six girls dressed as prostitutes in flashy dresses and stuff. Literally from where Stewart Avenue ends in Hapeville all the way to West End. The whole population was just, it, it was mind blowing. It was literally mind blowing. And that was just the main streets. They were, the girls were on the side streets and everything. And this was Stewart Avenue, which is now Metropolitan Avenue. I saw a house over there that I will assume, cause I never went in there, but I'm gonna assume it was cause the prostitutes used to hang out there and they'd be in and out. And it, it, was, it was some kind of house that I would say harbored criminal activity. And cause I don't know, I never went in there, but I used to see stuff cause there, back in the day, there was, a, there was a strip club on Stewart Avenue called Club Nicky's. And I used to go and you go, you, there's no way cause where Stewart Ave, where Club Nicky's was, you had to get on Stewart Avenue. You, there was no way you can get there without getting on Stewart Avenue. And you would just see all of this stuff, all of this stuff. Now today, Metropolitan, formerly Stewart Avenue, Metropolitan Avenue, is I saw a house, 3,600 bucks. I was like, what? 3,600 bucks for rent in Metropolitan. And essentially someone went in, redid it, new bathrooms, I guess new flooring and new stuff, and they renovated this. And I, I will say, I used, cause I don't go over there. So I don't really know if that area is still the hood. I really don't know. Because I used to live in what I consider to be the hood, the West End. When I lived in the West End, it's 100% the hood. There used to be a, crazy stuff that was going on. I remember this girl walking down the street with a gun shooting it while she was high. She was strung out on whatever she was strung out and she was just pop shooting as she's walked. And one of the things that I know is last time I went to the West End has dramatically changed, dramatically changed. I saw two white women walking around the neighborhood. When I lived in the West End, there were no white people. There were not one, there was, a, there was none. So it has changed. So this is what I have to say. These areas 
used to be the hood. I cannot be 100% certain because I don't hang out there. I don't know what's going on. And where I'm at, it's a long way from where, it's really a long way. So with that, the job crisis, the repossession crisis, the credit card delinquencies, 2024 is going to be an incredibly hard year for a lot of people. Now, one of the things that I see as someone who actually started a successful business in the middle of a recession is you've got to make some moves. Maybe you want to start a business, maybe you don't, but I would start getting rid of all useless debt, all subscriptions, all, I would get rid of all of this stuff. This little stuff that I call, it, it just paints your budgets. This $20 bill here, this $70 bill here, this, I'll get rid of all that stuff. I would go ahead and start loading up and reserving my cash. Now, I know there's a lot of videos that say, do not keep cash in the bank, the banks are in trouble. What I have to say to that, in 19, the beginning of the Great Depression, a lot of banks closed, but a lot of banks didn't. So what I would do is go check out the health of my bank. I would see where my bank is. And I would just bet, I would just bank with the best banks. I would not bank with, if a bank is like 25 or 30 on the list, I would be looking at that kind of suspiciously. I would just bank with the top banks. Uh, the top banks pretty much are not going anywhere because essentially, once again, let me go ahead and say this, pretty much, but it depends upon their exposure to commercial real estate. Even though residential real estate is going up, going on up, commercial real estate is taking a beating. There was an apartment complex in Atlanta that was worth 40 million and it just got repossessed by the bank because the people who had the loan on the apartment complex could not make the payments. And this is another thing that's happening. Where I used to live, a lot of people got evicted. A lot of people got evicted, right? And I need to go ahead and think, that's just not the only apartment. That's just not the only apartment. There were other apartments that were having similar issues because I just spoke of what I was going through living there. And what you, you gotta see is this impacted all of these apartments from Buckhead to Midtown to Brookhaven to Shambly. All these apartments got impacted. So you have a lot of apartments out there who cannot get enough renters if they have a high leverage loan. Typically, I don't know how the loan situation worked for the apartment complex, but when I was looking at buying an apartment complex, they were telling me that I had to come with 25% down. So if you come that with 25% down and you have a good property, and then all of a sudden you have a lot of evictions, that can mess up your money in many ways because I think a lot of these high-end apartments are empty. That's my opinion. A lot of them, because I know where I used to live, they have downgraded the staff. I know from the parking lot, I know for the fact, the parking lot, that the place is empty, way emptier than it used to be. Because when I moved in, it was packed. It was jam-packed. Um, so I can say what happened, that property has happened to other properties. And now you have a group of properties with very large mortgage notes on them that may be in danger of being foreclosed on. So commercial real estate, unless it's something that's uh, super, was in that place to be because we have all this other stuff, right? But every Saturday and Sunday, when I tune into college football and the NFL football, guess what? These stadiums are full. <laughs> so once again, there's a group of people that have money. There's a group of people that have money to go to college football games, go to uh, professional football games. So there, there's a group of people with money, but what I think is happening with the folks who have money is they're just 
sitting on their money. They're just like, I'm gonna wait this thing out. I'm gonna see, especially when it comes to buying a car and especially on home prices, because I don't know what's gonna happen with home prices because you've got a group of people who bought homes years ago, got really good interest rates, like 2%, 3% interest rates, and now interest rates are seven to 8%, plus the price of houses have dramatically increased. So if you, if I was uh, someone that bought a house three, four years ago, had a great interest rate and had no urge to move, had no real need to move, I wouldn't be moving. So this is gonna keep more houses off the market. It's really hard to say because there, there's a sludge of YouTube channels talking about the housing crash and all this other stuff, and these markets are going down. And one of the things you need to realize is that the, the dramatic increase in prices happened so quick that a house that was like 200,000 in 2019 is now 450. So it's like, hey, we're gonna cut the price 50,000. Okay, that house is still $200,000 more expensive than it was two years ago. So even with these market adjustments and price cuts, these houses are still insanely expensive compared to what they used to be. So I don't really see a lot of relief and I don't see a massive housing crash because of the vast elevation in housing prices, which has led to a vast elevation in real estate property tax. And I do believe some people are having issues with insurance. Let's look at it. Jobs are getting worse. Repossessions are going up. Evictions are going up. Foreclosures are going up. You put all that together, it just spells that December 2024 is going to be the year of the recession. It's just going to be what it is. And what you need to do is once again, this is really, you need to get it in your head that you can make, you need to make more money. You need to get this in your head that you need to make more money. Uh, one of the things that you have to understand, you need to make more money. You got to make more money. You got to set yourself up to making more money. And whatever way that you can do that, it may be driving for Uber. And also, let me go ahead and say this. You're keeping your full time job and you're going to go out and find something else to bring in more money. Maybe Uber, maybe DoorDash, maybe starting a YouTube channel, whatever you need to do, you got to do it. And I will say Uber, DoorDash, Uber Eats, but DoorDash, I believe, has 65% of the market. So Uber Eats, DoorDash, all this stuff, you go ahead and work, you're gonna get paid very quickly. Now, when starting a business, there's gonna probably be a two, three, four month lag before you get paid. So if you wanna start a business, you need to be working on that now because it's gonna take some time for you to get paid. It's gonna take time for you to get this money. So one of the things that you have to do is put it in your head that you're going to cut back and then you're going to excel. You're gonna cut back on your spending and you're gonna make more money. You need to do both of these things at the same time to put yourself in a position where this recession is just a little hiccup for you versus absolute devastation. Uh, one of the things that you have to do, one of the things that you have to realize is that when you understand what's going on and you manage your money appropriately, you can put yourself in a position to win. One of the things that you have to do is cut back on spending. And spending is a huge part of the American economy. So with a cutback on spending, that's going to harm the economy even more. But you need to do what you need to do to protect you, you, yourself and your family. And one of the things that you guys have got to understand, because you need to actually position yourself to win in the bad economy. You need to position yourself where you can actually do quite well in a bad economy. And this is one of the things that you have to do. So you gotta position your money correctly. 
you gotta position yourself where you are in the position to win economically in this economy because I don't think this economy is going to be kind. I don't think this economy is going to be really nice to anyone. And what I'm seeing, I'm just like the number of people who are personally telling me that they're having a hard time finding jobs is quite alarming because these are people I've known who are highly technical and these are six figure people and six figures well off. One of my friends makes 450,000. He was before he got laid off. And he told me his layoff story was he went to work. He didn't see anything coming. And then he knew to his desk says, we need to see you in the boardroom, go in the boardroom. There was a lady, here's your folder. At the moment, we're laying off these people. This is your severance package. Since you've been here for a few years, you're gonna get, I think he got like a year severance, which is really good because finding another job like what he had ain't gonna be easy. Even in a good market, it takes time to find those kind of high level jobs. So he's gonna get paid for a year. And I told him, I was like, look, you need to go ahead and approach finding another job like you were broke. You need to get on it. You do not need to take a vacation. You do not need to chill. You do not need to hang out because that year is gonna come and go fast. And he said, I agree. I agree because I'm just looking, fortunately for him, he doesn't have a lot of debt and his house is almost paid off. So he's in a good position for this recession. But once again, this recession will not be playing with folks. It's going to be brutal. It's going to be nasty. And we're going to see a lot of bad things in this recession. We're just going to see it. All right. That's all I got. I'll see you guys in the next one.